Hello there friends and welcome for today's BG3 guide we have all about Minthara, the draw companion with a very fun and quite thematic Oathbreaker Paladin build. You will of course achieve enormous damage on your smites, higher than even 120, all further enhanced by Minthara's very own unique ability called Soul Branding, as it has unlimited uses, triple paladin aura, string power and buff allies with higher saving throws, immunity to frighten, and even the unique Aura of Hate from Oathbreaker to add not only double her charisma modifier but also double strength eventually to damage. For those nice one shots. So without further ado, let us get into our Minthara Oathbreaker build. Minthara already comes as a level 1 paladin, but we still need to make her into an Oathbreaker. Thankfully, there's a super easy way of doing that. Simply respect her into the Oath of the Ancients Paladin, then go kill any random NPC, which will make her fall. After that, it's the same as any other Oathbreaker. Wait until you get the Oathbreaker cutscene, then go to your campsite when resting at night, speak with the Oathbreaker NPC, and that's it. But anyways, we want to change her ability scores as well. I've decided to go all out into Charisma because of the great synergy it has with Paladin, especially the Oathbreaker unique Aura of Hate ability, to enhance all your damage equal to your Charisma modifier. So be sure to start with 16. Our second most important stat as always is going to be Dexterity for Initiative. I mean, do you wanna alpha strike enemies before they can do anything at all, or not? As far as strength, you can simply use the elixirs of heal giant strength very early, even as early as what, level 3 to level 4, which is when you would recruit Minthara anyways, to set her strength to 21 per long rest, easily farmable as well. Of course, you can always go with the Warlock Pact of the Blade multiclass for charisma to both damage and attack rolls. But I've already done that type of build in the past, I want this one to be different. Anyways, for the remaining stats, 14 constitution as always, and the last two points can go into let's say wisdom, for an easier time resisting most enemy crowd control effects. For skills it's going to depend, by virtue of her high charisma, Minthara can be your party's face to pass most of the dialogue checks, especially intimidation, persuasion and deception. She already has persuasion from her background, so you might as well specialize into intimidation now and athletics. Because like I said, you will have high strength regardless. For the second level, as I said before, you can always go with the classic 3 levels into Warlock Multiclassing and Pact of the Blade. But this time, I want to focus into Paladin, especially for the unique Paladin and Oathbreaker abilities we'll get with more Paladin levels. For the fighting style, definitely great weapon fighting, so that you deal higher damage on average. And well, we'll be going all out into two-handed weapons for the maximum damage. When it comes to spells, please remember that I already have a best spells guide you can check to the side here, where I cover each in depth. For now, let's keep it simple as always. And well, it's going to depend if you have a cleric party member or not, because if you don't, you can't really leave all of your spells for smites, you'll have to use some buffs as well. So bless, shield of faith. Heroism can help early as far as the smite spells themselves, like Thunderous Smite and Searing Smite. They all cost both a bonus and a normal action, which I find a waste. I'd much rather just use the normal Paladin Smites, because they only cost a spell slot instead. Divine Favor can also help for some extra damage as you get more attacks. For level 3, by virtue of being a draw, Minthara gets the highly useful Fairy Fire spell but just remember it requires concentration. For level 4 we'll get our feet at last and we absolutely want Great Weapon Master as always for maximum damage. Who doesn't want a plus 10 static added to all of your attacks? Plus even a bonus attack whenever killing an enemy, very easy to do when you have powerful smites. Another reason why I don't like the smite spells, I'd rather the bonus action be spent attacking the enemy instead. At level 5 we get a second paladin attack which is extremely useful, and be sure to get the 8th spell unless you have a cleric to provide it. For level 6 we have the first and honestly one of the best paladin auras, Aura of Protection, for a bonus to the saving throws of everyone in our party including Minthara, equal to her charisma modifier which will go even up to plus 6 eventually. And at level 7 we get at last the Oathbreaker unique Aura of Hate which enhances the damage of Minthara and also 
things and undead equal to her charisma modifier. The issue with undead is it only works from melee attacks. And well, the skeleton has a ranged weapon, while the zombies, they have unarmed only, which doesn't count for this aura's purpose. So it's kind of not going to work with any of your undead party members, which is very disappointing. For fiends, however, you have the Cambion Summon from the Planar Ally spell and also the Infernal Rapier weapon. But it's mostly going to be uh, all about boosting Minthara's own damage. For level 8, we can grab another feat. And well, it's time to start enhancing our Charisma, as you already have a lot of nice abilities that benefit from a higher modifier. Of course, you can always go for the classic Alert feat for higher initiative. At level 9, we at last get access to level 3 Paladin spells. Revivify is always amazing, but you can always cast this from a scroll instead. The same for Crusader's Mantle. Even the Warden of Vitality unique Paladin spell. For Elemental Weapon, just use the Drake Throat Glaive instead. Because you already have maximum spellcasting at this point for the most powerful smite spells, even the minor skeleton and zombie summons, you can always multiclass now into let's say fighter, as with 4 levels you'll get the last feat, also the action surge ability for more attacks, and let's say the champion subclass for higher critical range. I'm all about providing you with options, it's just that I've done this fighter multiclassing so many times in the past, this time, I'll be keeping Minthaura as a pure Oathbreaker for something unique. We get the last Paladin Aura at level 10, Aura of Courage, which makes allies immune to Frighten. It's decent as well, but at this point, not many enemies use Frighten abilities. Level 11, however, is very fun for a pure Paladin or Oathbreaker, because it's when you get the unique Improved Divine Smite ability, which enhances all of your attacks by 1d8 extra Radiant. And level 12 is mostly about the extra feat, you might as well set your charisma to the max now. Alright, now let us cover gear for our Minthaura Oathbreaker. Well, it's the classic package for most melee two-handed characters, but the helmet slot is quite unique, the Diadem of Arcane Synergy. Whenever you inflict a condition, and honestly, by just existing, you will always have this on, because it works with so many different stuff. For example, you are very on Paladin Auras and you have three of them. Even just activating Minthara's unique Soul Branding ability will already turn this on. Anyways, whenever you do so, you'll get your Charisma modifier added to damage. When you combine this with the unique Aura of Hate feature, we now have double Charisma to our damage. So it's definitely the must-have. And for very early during Act 1, there's always the classic Haste Helm for higher movement. For cloaks, there's nothing that really stands out, you can go with the Cloak of Protection for plus 1 AC. But since Minthara has heavy armor, her AC will always be at the very least decent, which is why I went with the Cloak of Displacement instead. But like I said, you can go with anything you want. For armor, ultimately definitely Helldusk, the best heavy armor in the whole game. Or even the Armor of Persistence. But for Act 1, it's always going to be the Adamantine Splint Armor. There's nothing really comparable for this type of character. For gloves, ultimately Helldusk, or even the Gauntlets of Frost Giant Strength, if you don't want to rely on the Elixir, you get 27 Strength instead, which frees you for, of course, let's say the Elixir of Bloodlust. But for Act 1, and even the second act, it's just going to be the classic gloves of the Growling Underdog to force advantage on all of your attacks. Perfect for any melee build. Go with any boots you want, I have the Evasive Shoes here, because your Minthara can tank reliably, after all, she has heavy armor, and this is still missing a few other buffs like Shield of Faith. For amulets, ultimately greater health if you want very high hit points, but earlier you can always rely on the classic Broodmother's Revenge for higher damage, or Amulet of the Harpers for higher defense, and even the Pearl of Power because Paladins only get up to level 3 spells, and this amulet can restore one level 3 slot per rest. And for rings, it's just a classic package for extra damage on hit. Caustic Pen for extra acid, and the Risky Ring can really help this build as well, or you can just remain equipped with the gloves of the underdog and leave this ring for another character. There's always Crusher's Ring for higher movement, even very early in Act 1, and Strange Conduit for higher damage on hit, the same for the Callous Glow Ring for Radiant. And yes, this character, by virtue of having Smite and Radiant damage, can also equip the gear that debuffs the enemy's attacks with Radiating Orb. 
The chest, the luminous gloves and luminous armor is just that I've already done that type of build in the past. For weapons, definitely Baldurin's Giant Slayer later, unless you went with the Pact of the Blade Warlock, because you already have Charisma to hit. But this can really improve your damage by a lot. And for the first and second acts, always Jorgoral's Great Sword. The special cleave ability this weapon has is amazing, and cleave has extreme synergy with Paladin Smites. Just remember to set your Smites as reaction, because this way they'll be automatically applied whenever you cleave through the enemies. And for the bow, just a classic dead shot for higher criticals. When it comes to consumables, you have two options. Bloodlust for an extra action when you kill an enemy, or the Giant Strength Elixirs, which are easily farmable and achievable, especially the first one for 21 strength, by buying them once per long rest from the Dwarven Merchant at the Myconid Colony in the Underdark. This way you can go all out into Charisma without having to multi-class into the Pact of the Blade Warlock. And well, this was it for the Minthaura Oathbreaker build. If you found this guide useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe and also consider becoming a channel member if you can. I truly appreciate your support, friends. Thank you for watching and see you next time.